So what does it take to run that tunnel? King 5's Len Farley got a special tour behind the scenes today. You're the lucky duck. Cautionary day. note, we're hoping for Monday. You know, they haven't <laughs> committed to that yet. We're hoping to hear more on that tomorrow. Did you know that the tunnel has a lighting system that helps your eyes adjust as you head in and out of the tunnel? The tunnel isn't just a hole in the ground with lines in the pavement. It takes 34 people to maintain it. And you're about to see just what it takes to do that and what the tunnel can do. So these are the big visible fans that everybody can see uh, in the north end and the south end of the structure. Let's begin at ground level, below the most colorful part of the tunnel project. Those huge yellow stacks atop both the north and south operations buildings. But as big as these are, they're there for just one purpose, safety in case of a fire. You can see them at work during this emergency drill run months ago, as smoke is quickly sucked out of the tunnel through these metal louvers. It wasn't the only test to satisfy the Seattle Fire Department. They were trying everything they could do to overwhelm these fans. They were never able to do that. And for several days every month, these fans have to be run and tested. This building is a, it's a pressurized building. I'm getting a tour with Chris Johnson, the maintenance and operations manager for the Washington State Department of Transportation's Northwest Region, and tunnel system engineer Tarek Alzir. Both have years invested in this place. They take us behind the locked doors and we find that even if power were cut off from the city. We have a backup battery system that runs up each system for about 30 minutes until the generator takes off. Important systems in the tunnel would be powered for a day and a half until the generator ran out of fuel. The tunnel will actually be monitored and controlled 24-7 out of DOT's Shoreline Traffic Management Center miles away. But there's a smaller operations center right here. We've been testing the uh, system frequently, and the operator's been practicing it. Everything has been working as designed. Did I say there were lots of doors? This one to the maintenance shop. Things do wear out and do need to be repaired, so we can do that in-house. But that's what happens above ground. Let's go deeper. So it's about 80 feet below, below the uh, first level. And we have 40 uh, feet stacks, 120 feet to the bottom of the tunnel from the top of the stack. So this is the very bottom of the tunnel. You could say we're heading to the basement by elevator, um, a very deep basement. We can get our staff from the north end of the tunnel, the south end of the tunnel, without having to get into city, city traffic. And you could call this the tunnel below the tunnel, a two mile long passageway for drainage pipes and electric carts. And you can see where birth of the tunneling machine broke through back in April of 2017. The curve and the concrete wall still visible at the bottom. This is the wall that Bertha broke through, yes. Going back up, there are stairs and stairs and more doors. So you can feel the air blowing out of there. Different fans provide a constant pressure to the passageways along the west side of the tunnel which can be used as safe refuge areas and for escape. We've got a call station that dials to 911, and, and so you would tell them that I'm at fire zone, north 161. They would be able to then find you on the camera. Green lights mark the way to safety. There are lots of signs. 70 feet to the north to the stairwell, or 9,205 feet to the south to another set of stairs. And what about those bright lights in the ceiling? they will help your eyes adjust from the bright sunlight outside. You're gonna be driving from the tunnel out into the daylight. Um, your eyes are gonna be able to handle that. These are all the things that are running in the background. 3,000 maintenance items, louvers that have to be oiled, filters replaced. Inside this two mile long tunnel, there are 95 miles of wiring, 21 miles of sprinkler pipes, 15 miles of lights, there are heat detectors that can locate specifically where a fire is and 300 cameras to monitor traffic and security, along with 66 movable traffic control signs to inform drivers. So, so it's almost wow. like a living organism. It is. So are they ready then? Are they going to open on Monday? So Chris Johnson says the tunnel's good. They're basically doing kind of mop up, going through, are they, you know, are any tools left lying around, that kind of stuff. That's what he was saying. Tomorrow, we were expecting to hear from DOT, were they going to go for a solid opening on Monday? That's why I kind of 
brushed back. We don't have a solid. There was a news conference you're hoping for. Don't know if that's happening. I don't know what that quite means yet. Um, we're still hoping to have it. Mean, everything seems to be going pretty well, but there is a lot of just little stuff going on. Yeah, the, damn, the devil's in the details, right? Yes, it is. All right. All right. Thank you, Glenn. Interesting story there.